I'm Fred Child, PT coming to you all week long from the Aspen Music Festival and School in Aspen, Colorado. Now there are a lot of things you can do in Aspen, but we've gone about 10 miles west of Aspen to Snowmass Village, where every Wednesday night during the summer there's a rodeo, kind of a taste of the Old West. And I'm here with a conducting fellow from the American Academy of Conducting at Aspen, Roderick Cox. Roderick, thanks for joining me. Thank you, thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> what is the American Academy of Conducting at Aspen? What, what is that? Well, it's a very specialized program um, that's basically dedicated to the training of young conductors, some who are who started uh, professional careers and others who are in their advanced studies of, of being a conductor and sort of on the cuffs of being um, a professional. So you get training, extensive training with Robert Spano, um, Hugh Wolf, Larry Ratcliffe, and some very prominent conducting teachers. And this is something that's, it's pretty tough to find this. If you're a young conductor, there's almost nothing else like this because you go to school, you get a degree, but then what? <laughs> and there's yes. kind of that tough in-between period. Well, I think um, becoming a conductor is one of the most mysterious uh, professions um, to take on because you just try to figure out, well, how do you become a conductor? To become a trumpet player, you study uh, in, in high school and, and then you go get your undergrad and then you say, oh, I want to be a conductor, but I've only taken a couple conducting classes. Well, how do I get to do this on this sort of level? So it takes a lot of uh, searching. Yeah. Um, and especially when you manage to get into a, an elite conducting program at a university, then there comes Aspen, which is um, the international field. You know, over 200 applicants from around the world apply for this specific program, and they take about you know 10 or 12 each year. Do you ever get cheers like what we're hearing behind us when you're <laughs> when you're conducting? <laughs> yes, uh, classical music audiences, uh, especially in America, can be quite um, quite thrilling. Some of the it's interesting to see some of the reactions of my German uh, colleagues who come here in the academy, and they see after every performance, all you know, American art audiences are up clapping and give a standing ovation, which is not common where they're from. You were talking about um, how learning to be a conductor is tough and comparing it with learning to play the trumpet. If, you're, if you want to practice playing the trumpet, you just pick it up and play. Mm -hmm. How do you practice conducting? Well, um, there are a number of ways to do that. Um, I think one of the best ways is to develop an imagination, an imagination for the music, um, and to obviously work on learning as much about the music, as much about the composer as possible. And then with that, you, you, you study your videos uh, every time you're from the orchestra, figure out why didn't that work. Um, study videos of yourself. Conducting the yeah, orchestra yeah, if okay. you're in front of them. Um, and over, over time, over after you've gained experience, you, you figure out, okay, what actually works? What works with the orchestra? What doesn't work with the orchestra? And how you you can adjust so can you give me an example of one thing that works with an orchestra and one thing that you've discovered that does not work with an orchestra <laughs> well um, one thing that doesn't work with an orchestra is talking too much <laughs> with a professional orchestra is always best to show um, with your hands as much of the music as possible because of the limited rehearsal time one thing I um, I struggled with when I was a bit younger was trying to get the orchestra to move faster in a cello rondo is what yeah. we call it yeah. and um, I figured out try not to muscle the cello rondo try not to control it too much but to just do the opposite of when you want people to do something instead of getting bigger get smaller and just coast along and the orchestra will move uh, faster so interesting that's, that's a tough thing to to be able to slow the orchestra down and to speed the orchestra up. Right, right. When we are watching, when we as audience members are watching an orchestra with a conductor, we generally see your back mm -hmm. and we see your arms and hands moving. But is it, is it important to learn how to use your face and your eyes as a conductor in communicating your wishes to the orchestra? Yes, I think that's very important and it's something I've been thinking about this week um, a great deal as I move forward into the next performance for next week how do I 
really evoke the music um, from within. And part of that comes from, it's like this, it's like magic, sort of telepathic ability of, you know, really breathing the music, feeling the music and singing it so hard inside that it projects on the outside and the musicians just get it. And that's part of the, the great mystery of conducting, is that some people are able to have that, that charisma, that magic, as you said, that it just kind of exudes from them. And the orchestra picks it up and responds, and the audience picks up on that and responds. Some people have it and some people don't. Is that something you can learn to do? I, I, well, obviously, I think it is something you can learn to do, and it's just something you have to... Um, I think you have to let down a lot of guard um, and make yourself vulnerable. Be emotionally yes, vulnerable. Yes, because yeah. when, you, when you become a conductor, you are really sort of opening yourself up for these musicians to see inside of you, to see exactly how you're feeling and your emotions. So you can't be afraid to sort of show these emotions, I think. That's part of it. So you have to have the combination of the intellectual knowledge of the music. I mean, you have to know it cold, beginning to end. You have to know everybody's part in the entire orchestra and that emotional vulnerability at the same time. I mean, that's a rare combination in human interactions in general. And that's something you have to cultivate both sides to, to be a great conductor. Yes, I mean, I always say conducting is is a performing art. It is a performing art, and um, uh, that's why a musicologist who knows so much about music, probably more than I do, or a music theorist who can probably analyze uh, a Stravinsky right of spring so much better than I could, that doesn't mean that they necessarily have the... Um, all of the skills and ability to project all of that information to the orchestra right. and produce a performance and letting that music, giving the space and room for that music to flourish. All right, you tell me if I'm reaching with this, Roderick. Okay. But, but you just we're talking about conducting as a performing art. Mm -hmm. We are standing in front of the rodeo ring here in yes. Snowmass Village. <laughs> We've got some performers behind us. Uh-huh. Uh, now, I wonder if there's an analogy here with the cowboys and cowgirls and what you do as a conductor, that, that you're harnessing, you're working with all these musicians who have tremendous energy, and you're trying to harness that energy and direct it in a particular way and not get hurt in the process. <laughs> I guess we can draw that analogy. Number one, it's an, it's an athletic event. And, and I you're think trying to put on a show. Conducting yeah. is, there. it takes quite a bit of athleticism. Uh, you have to do your cardio and, <laughs> and um, you know, so you can make it through a Mahler symphony. But, you know, these people, they practice like we do. They prepare for these things. And in a way, uh, this the animal is something that is, I guess it's like an orchestra, it's, you could lose control, it's something you don't directly have much control over, but you try in a way, uh, and you use your instincts of what you want them to do and try to get them to do that. Unfortunately with them, you know, they fall off the horse, you know, they eventually <laughs> lose control. Literally. And as a conductor, we, we try to maintain the control throughout the whole performance rather than falling off. <laughs> and maybe, maybe if it's going really well between a horse and a rider, it's not like a, a dictator relationship. You're like, if it's going really well, you're colleagues. You're in it together. Yes. And maybe there's something similar there going on behind us in the rodeo, mm -hmm. too. That's a very interesting part of being a conductor that I learned um, really over the past couple of years. Well, you're, when you're young, you're just trying to figure out, well, why don't they like me or how do I get people to like me? But you have to stay true to who you are, in essence, because that's when you can be uh, show your vulnerability and be authentic because right. when you're trying to pretend to, or trying to be someone who you're not, that's when you get in trouble. And, they, and the orchestra knows that immediately. Yes, and we, we don't make sound, but what we do have is our standard. We have our standard for a piece of music or, um, or program, and that's what we must carry, and we can't lose sight of that. Right. Um, so when it doesn't work with, some, with one orchestra, 
you know, you can't lose yourself. Maybe think, okay, why didn't that work? But then you might go to another orchestra and they love you and, and it, there's, that, that, there's that connection. It's sort of like a date. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, see if there's that chemistry there. You exactly. want to see how you get along. But as a conductor, it's it's all about finding the connection. It's it's different. It's a different relationship everywhere you go. Right. So music is a universal language, but you know, everybody has a different accent. There's yes, there's a different <laughs> accent for each of those. All right, Roderick Cox, uh, conducting fellow at the American Academy of Conducting at Aspen last summer and this summer. Also assistant yes. conductor of the Alabama Symphony Orchestra and music director of their youth orchestra mm -hmm. and auditioning for more stuff this coming year, yes? Yes, yes I am. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to um, traveling more and getting to know more orchestras in the U.S. And um, yeah, I'm very excited about what's on the horizon. I look forward to uh, hearing much more of your work in the future. A real pleasure to meet you. And thank you so much for coming to the Snowmass Village Rodeo thank with you. us. Thank you. It's great place to do a classical music interview. <laughs> I will always remember this. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. At the rodeo. Thank you. <laughs>